One word that you could never use to describe Black Flag is fun. There is nothing fun about Black Flag. Black Flag is an atonal brand of anti-fun, if anything else. And they're not supposed to be fun. If they were fun, they wouldn't be Black Flag. The early 80s belonged to the band, okay? They dominated the United States from coast to coast. Non-stop touring, non-stop writing, non-stop dropping, and just being like, hey, we are the alpha males of the hardcore punk scene. But today, they're dead and gone, and they're nothing but a legacy and a bunch of stories told by an old fart on stages and on podcasts. Hey ladies, how's it going? Dan Frampton here, and today we're gonna go through the Black Flag catalog and determine the exact day. We're gonna pinpoint it down to the release that killed the band. I gotta be super upfront with you here at the beginning. I've never been a huge fan of the band. They're more of like a vibe and an aesthetic and kind of like a red-pilled punk rock vibe, you know? They kind of got this like alpha male kind of Andrew Tate vibe going to them. They don't seem to have a lot of respect for anybody around them, especially their fans. But their hustle and their Sigma grind set is what kept them alive for so long. And by so long, I mean like four or five years. If we strap on our Speedo and knee pads, we can slide down this rabbit hole right here and it's gonna start with this little tuner box right here the guitar player of Black Flag he's known as Greg Ginn all right and before any of the Black Flag stuff he was a 12 year old boy so interested in ham radios and I know nobody on the internet today knows what a ham radio is but this is a dial for a ham radio and essentially what a ham radio is is a radio that you could buy and then you could broadcast your own show to other people that have ham radios. So it was like kind of like a YouTube type thing, a podcast type thing, way before this type thing. So at the age of 12, Greg Ginn is developing a hell of a set of teeth and also developing these tuners. He is quite the dorky nerd type guy, which is so weird to put in contrast with that alpha male Henry Rollins that ended up fronting the group. So that's gonna bring us to our next stop in this rabbit hole, and that is the Black Flag album Damaged. Now they've already gone through three singers by the time that they put out their first record. Keith Morris, get out of here. Ron Reyes, get out of here. Des, I guess you can stay in the band, but please stop singing. And now it's time for Henry Rollins to hit the scene. And Henry Rollins is singing songs that he didn't write because this was all recorded before he even got there. He just came in and used it as a template to make it sound like Henry Rollins. And Henry Rollins was indeed the missing piece of Black Flag that really exponentially exploded them. I love this record. This record is iconic. This song is song to song to song. My jam, okay? I love this thing. Greg Ginn is not really my favorite guitar player, and Henry Rollins is certainly not my favorite front man, but on this thing, they just captured magic in a bottle. This record is so good that it would make me, a staunch Henry Rollins hater, get these four bars tattooed across my heart. This record is unreal. So after this record came out, I guess they didn't like that everybody liked it, so they were just like, let's drastically change our style and be doom rock. Let's Let's be more influenced by Black Sabbath, why not, and put out My War, where the first part of the album is gonna be a bunch of kind of punk rock, kind of hardcore songs, but then the back half are gonna be like nine minute doom metal songs that fucking suck ass. Now of course this polarized people, of course this pissed people off. This was a drastic change for the band, and in my opinion, they don't have the chops to pull off that kind of music. They need to be going fast and screaming about beer and screaming about being kind of like greedy in the party scene. You know, that's the kind of vibe that Black Flag kind of nails. When they're like, let's be a pretentious metal band, it doesn't fly for me. But what I do love about this record is Bill Stevenson, the drummer, and the brains behind the Descendants is the drummer on this thing, and actually would be the drummer on the rest of these recordings. There were three years between Damaged and this record right here, My War. And the album art, most people think is like Hitler getting punched in the face with a boxing glove, and that's not what it is. It's a hand puppet holding a knife. You see this little tie underneath here? And these are his hands wrapped around. It's like a fucking, I don't know, a really creepy doll coming at you with a knife. My war. 
In my opinion, this record is not really that great. I don't love it. I'm not going back to it, but it is another shiny sword for the samurai known as Black Flag. This would be a really prolific year for Black Flag, and most people think that that's very impressive, but not me, because the record that came out after this, the very same year, is just this horribly written spoken word nonsense, okay? I fucking hate this thing. Family man. Henry Rollins just yammering on for the first half of this thing, and the back half, just like this experimental rush jazz rock type stuff. I, I don't think that this really suits the band. This is the first time that Kira would hit the group playing bass, so they're kind of rounding out their lineup, and it is cool to see that, but this record is not fun. It is not cool. I have no idea what they were doing, and of course they could shit this out so quickly after putting out My War. Yes, My War seems like it was kind of an elaborate effort to put together, but this thing seems like they did it in an afternoon. This record sucks ass. The best thing about it, and the best thing about all Black Flag work, is the artwork. Raymond Pettibon pfft, knocks it out of the park every single time. So like I said, 1984, very prolific year for the band. You know, they're actually too busy to be considered dead, even though I do not like them. They are hitting up every town. They are hitting up every club. They are causing a scene. They are making legends out of themselves, and that can't be considered dead, okay? And they're kind of like, gonna be talked about for the rest of time. So, they're not dead by this point. This record here, slip it in. They're kind of going back to that My War type stuff, and I don't like this record either. And the front cover might be a little bit, I don't know, misogynistic and kind of woman-hating, but if I wasn't clear, I hate the album cover and the music on this record. <laughs> slip it in. It really is as sexist as it sounds. And if you haven't heard those Henry Rollins interviews when he's like, I don't like a woman if she doesn't go to the gym six times a day. She needs to be as fit as me, Henry Rollins, if she's gonna even be seen in the same room as me. If she's gonna breathe the air that Henry Rollins breathes, you know, I'm an Adonis. I'm Henry Rollins. Have you seen my nipples? Everybody's seen my nipples. Everyone loves my nipples, and everybody should wanna be around my nipples. And if you're gonna be around my nipples, you gotta be in tip-top shape. And to me, now I'm, now I'm back to being Dan Frampton. Now I think that that's just an incorrect way to live your life. And it really is on this record slip it in where we're really feeling those alpha male red pill vibes very based this thing is just cluttered i have no idea why people listen to it the solos on it are disgustingly bad yeah like i said they're an atonal brand of nonsense it doesn't make any sense what they're doing musically but for some reason so many people fucking love it but like i said they're so prolific they're so busy they're making legends out of themselves so they're not dead yet but 1985 is the, ne is the very next year, you know? So they're keeping that going. They're writing a record. They're going out and touring that record. They're coming back and writing another record and recording it. Then they're touring it. There's boom, repeat, 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 repeat. And there is something to be said about that that is pretty respectful, okay? That is pretty admirable. And that behavior alone inspired hardcore band after hardcore band after punk band after indie band to do the very same thing. Wait, we can just like book our own shows and go town to town to town? We don't need to wait for an agent? We don't need to wait for a fucking manager to do this? We can just do this ourselves? And not only that, like I said about these solid state tuners, if you didn't notice, it has the SST logo right here on the front. Greg Ginn, yes, Greg Ginn, the guitar player, would turn his ham radio business into a record company to release Black Flag records. That is the definition of do it yourself. And he would go on to release other bands, starting with the band Minutemen. Now, if you're not familiar with Minutemen, you gotta go get yourself familiar with them. So they just kept that grind set going, and this record, Loose Nut, would've came out in 1984 if 1984 had infinite days, okay? They just kept going. 1985 now rolls around, and it's Loose Nut time. Bill is still playing with the band, so that means Milo wants to come in and do a couple guest spots, and by a couple, I mean just one on the, on the title track, the first track on this thing. But as you're going through these records in modern times, Damaged has so many listens, like tens of millions of listens, and this thing barely cracks half a million, like per track. So yeah, that still is a lot for a punk band, a huge amount for a hardcore band, but kind of nothing compared to what they started with. They're just on this like downward spiral, and I think they're just like burnt out. They're just going crazy for no reason. They don't need to be doing this. They could have put out Damaged and then waited until 1985 to write and record something really <laughs> worth listening to and then put that out. But that wasn't the Black Flag approach. And I'm actually glad that they took the approach that they did because 
it really did set the foundation for a really healthy DIY culture. And they should always be credited as the, like, the forefathers of that, them and Minor Threat and Bad Brains, you know, that group of DC kind of people, that group of kind of LA kind of people putting this stuff on the map, making you go out for it, you know? That's these guys. So yes, it's sloppy. And by this point, it's still very, very tired feeling because they've got to be burnt out. They're just non-fucking stop. There aren't enough days in the week for Black Flag. So as they're hanging onto that cliff for dear life, there's fingernails gripping the sand. You know, you can see the trail. They're about to fall off the cliff 1985 still is happening and they put out this record in my head which is like critically acclaimed to be their best record but to me this is clearly where they've died if you meet anybody that's like man this record here over here this is like the beginning of post hardcore okay there wouldn't be like new metal or fucking whatever else if it wasn't for in my they should eat shit this record is brutal from front to back the nothing makes sense on it and Henry Rollins is almost at his most insufferable. He would be at his most insufferable if it weren't for this pile of crap over here. Family man. God damn. <laughs> Henry Rollins doing poetry is hilarious. I might have to do a video where I read some Henry Rollins poetry. Nothing that they did aged well, and yes, by the time they put out their final record, they are as dead as possible. They ground their aesthetic into the ground. They ground their fucking sound into the ground, and they ground themselves into the ground. Hell, I wouldn't even imagine they'd want to be in the same room as one another ever again after all this. And not only that, they weren't homies to begin with. They were all completely different people just doing the bidding of Greg Ginn, pretty much. The whole Black Flag vibe is all played out by now and there's only one good track on this record and that one good track is called Drinking and Driving and it's a hell of a song. So the world expects Black Flag to be dead and gone. Henry Rollins moves on. He's doing now like speaking engagements. You can go watch Henry Rollins speak <laughs> if you want. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. I can't imagine going out for an evening of fun to go see Henry Rollins indulge himself and yourselves in anecdotes from the past. I couldn't imagine that being fun. That seems like such a scuffed experience. But 28 years later, they put out this pile of trash called What The. Now, if you're noticing that, artwork. That isn't the amazing artwork of Mr. Pettibond or whatever. No, no, no. This is Greg Ginn again being like, I can do art. Here's me doing artwork. Look at this thing. And it's the most hideous cover that has ever existed. I don't think that there's a person on this planet that thinks this looks sick. This thing was panned by everybody because it should be. Look at it. It's awful. And the music on it is even worse. I'm sad to say it's just 22 songs. 44 fucking minutes of the worst shit you've ever heard. And Greg Ginn is playing like guitar. He's playing lead guitar. He's playing the bass as his fucking alter ego that I'm not even gonna mention because I think that's so fucking stupid. Then, no, Henry Rollins isn't gonna be here, but you know who's coming back? Ron Reyes from all the way back before they started recording and putting out LPs. We're gonna bring him back as a fucking 55 year old guy to scream nonsense into a microphone on what the what the is right. I can't imagine a time and a place where it is the time and place for this record. This thing is a pile of trash. I don't know why someone dug up that fucking skeleton, fucked it, and then killed it again. Now it might have been dead from the 80s and I might have lost respect for Henry Rollins way back then, okay? But this is the moment where I lose all respect for Mr. Greg Ginn. This is a total blunder. This is a major mistake. You should have never done this. And I don't understand why you don't just go back and retroactively change this cover. All new pressings have a better cover with Raymond Pettibon artwork on it. But I guess that might be another bridge you burn along the ways of being Black Flag. This wasn't a video about all the drama. This wasn't a video about all the lawsuits. I don't fucking care about this for this video, but that will make a great video for the future. Oh, and guess who produced it? That's right, Mr. Ginn, okay? All over this thing, and he has no idea what he's doing. The levels are up and down. Ron is like buried in the mix sometimes. He's way too loud other times. It's just back and forth fucking shit. This record really is bad enough to erase everything good that they've ever done if it didn't create a whole subculture unto itself. But they did, so I have to give them credit for whatever fucking reason, no matter how hard it is for me to do it. But I gotta go. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you're cool as hell, and until my next upload, watch another upload.